guys, Dustin here, and today we have the coolest, biggest, largest, most accurate, and most expensive pistol we've ever tested, the H&K Mark 23. You know it from video games, you know it from movies, you know it from the US Navy SEALs. It's a beast, it's awesome, and we're gonna have some fun. But first, so with the Desert Eagle, we saw how many fire extinguishers it would shoot through. You wanna find out? Go watch it. So now we're gonna have to do that with the German Desert Eagle, but, Instead of, I only had hollow points earlier. I've got these 135 grain honey badger ammo from Black Hills Ammo. These are penetrators. They're bound to be supersonic. I figure if anything's gonna go through a couple fire extinguishers, it'll be this honey badger ammo because you know, honey badger don't care. Oh, that was cool. That was neat. <laughs> So we obviously went through one just fine. And let's see here. I should have numbered them. Oh, there's two. I bet that's it. I bet that's it. Which is kind of interesting because that means it's the same as the two. Oh, I'm not gonna tell you. You have to go figure that out. But there we go. There we go. Went through two. And uh, I bet the... <laughs> that stuff tastes bad. Yuck. Okay, I bet the bullet's still in there, but I will leave that for, leave that for another day. So just some observations on the gun. Now, like we may have mentioned earlier, it's a big honking gun, right? They call it the German Desert Eagle on purpose because compared to a Desert Eagle, it really is about the same size. In fact, some holsters even holster the Desert Eagle or they'll holster the HK Mark 23. So if you've got teeny tiny hands, it's gonna feel even larger because of that big grip there. The One of the crazy things is the magazine's 12 rounds, which, okay, that's a good bit of 45, but you know, Glocks are like 13. And the FNX 45, those are 15. So, well, this this is a good bit older though. You know, it, it was the early 90s that it was designed, and it was designed for to give U.S. SOCOM forces just the top-notch offensive pistol that was super accurate, and you could you could even practically use up at 50 yards. And so that's why it's just such a big honking gun. It's never meant to conceal carry. If someone can seal carries, please go on my Facebook page and post a picture of it. We'd love to see how you do it. And bonus points if you do it with a suppressor. But <laughs> there's, there's several things that are just unique to this gun. Um, <laughs> one thing is it's just, you'll notice this extra rail adapter right here because they call it universal mounting grooves, but it's not universal at all by today's standards. Back in the day, okay, I get it, maybe that was it. But now we use pick rails. So you can throw something like this gg and g pick rail adapter on there and then you can mount lights and whatnot. But by today's standards, this rail is outdated. And honestly, I think they should update that a little. The trigger, HK will tell you that it's a match grade trigger. Maybe 30 years ago, a five pound trigger would be. Today's days is not that great. Uh, I mean, it's it's good, uh, yeah, but five pounds and a little a little over five pounds, like 5.1 pounds, it's uh, it, it's adequate. That's for sure. And for a combat gun, that's great. For match grade, I'd like a little bit lighter. While the double action is incredibly smooth and clean, it's incredibly heavy as well because my scale only goes past 11 pounds, and then it says over, which means it's too stinking heavy. And so you're over 12 pounds or so, and Okay, at least it gives you a double action feature, but it's heavy. So if you need a trigger finger workout, the HK is a nice $2,000 trigger finger workout, and you can get that finger just so muscly. Now, like many HKs, it has the European magazine release. Don't be afraid of this. The guys who have the most trouble with this are the ones who try to reach it with their thumb like a stupid American. No, you use your trigger finger, and then you can reach it, and it doesn't have to be too big for when you wear gloves and all that. It's just right there. It's easy to go. It has... A safety, so you can do the whole cocked and locked thing. When the safety's, uh, when the hammer's down, you cannot engage the safety. But then it also has a decocker, which can be perfectly silent if you know how to use it. Because we all know seals like to be perfectly silent, right? But why do you need to decock your gun? It makes it's a nice feature. HK only releases a few of these every year because they cling to their no compromise and perfection. They take extra care to make sure that these are zeroed perfectly at 25 yards. And a lot of times, I was reading a forum of God, how do I adjust these? Because you actually have to switch out the rear sights to adjust the elevation. It's like, everything hits low left. That's you, doofus. 
So trust the gun, trust what HK did with it, and you'll be driving tax with it. Mark 23 is supposed to be stupid accurate, so let's try some stupid uh, uh, shots, right? We've got a playing card down there, kind of a playing card. They're bullseye cards at Marksman Camp, so I'm not sure if they're gonna cut as clean as playing cards. I haven't done this in years. I used to do it for autograph cards before I had autograph cards on Top Shot. Anyway, that kind of mess. Let's shut up and shoot. Let's shoot that thing in half. Right about here. Sweet! <laughs> That's cool! That's cool! That was a nice cut right there. I guess they do cut just as well as uh, a regular playing cards. Where's the... Is that it? Oh my gosh, that went far. Oh yeah, that's cool right there. Awesome. Well, I say that's accurate enough. Look at that. I guess that bullet went straight down the middle the way it fanned it. That's cool. The muzzle is, of course, threaded for a suppressor. However, it's a wild thread pitch. It's like a 16 millimeter right-handed. All the other HK guns are left-handed. Like, you know, foreign guns always come lefty for some reason. And metric, of course. But now it's 16 and righty. I don't know. Y'all leave a comment, because I didn't go searching every thread pitch and compare, but is, is that just the HK Mark 23 thing, or who else does that? Because, as far as I can tell, that's it. Now, besides just being a solid block of steel, some of the accuracy is improved by this O-ring in the barrel. Now, what impressed me the most is that the manual claims that this O-ring will last for 20,000 rounds before you have to replace it. That's pretty crazy cool. It's got a taper inside the slide so it has consistent solid lockup and is always going to be centered and accurate and of course reliable. This thing has not jammed on me a bit. I've used all sorts of different ammo, uh, several hundred rounds through it, and which that is par for the course because in the trials and testing that SOCOM ran it through, they were having a mean of 6,000 rounds between failures. Most people don't even shoot that much, and if you're complaining about the price of the gun being two grand, how much is 6,000 rounds of 45 ammo, right? <laughs> so, pretty cool. You'll never jam until you surpass your gun in ammo cost, right? Now, the first time I was shooting it, I just felt it, just the blockiness of it, and that slide, that big chunk of a slide going back and forth, you feel it, kakunk, 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 kakunk. And so that part is pretty neat, but uh, you know, 445 is extremely manageable. And HK claims that maybe it's just marketing, but, but that it's a 40% reduction in recoil because of their uh, special captured recoil spring in there. D this spring does look unique uh, because it's got a, a dual spring and then of course it is captured and they say it kind of works as a piston. We'll shoot it side by side my FNX tactical and see what that feels like. How does that sound? All right, so I have my FNX Tactical and the HK-23 right here. And this is interesting because, of course, they're both big honking guns, but the FNX is a little bit smaller. And the grip size is definitely smaller, but it holds three more rounds. So what's happening there? So this, this the HK is beefier. We're going to shoot side by side, and then I'll switch hands just to be fair. All right, make sure those ears are in. Same Angel Fire ammo in both of them. We're just going to go into the dirt. Let's see, all right. Huh. Actually, it almost feels the other way around. Let's try this. No, it's just my left hand. My left hand feels like there's more. So. I don't see a difference. They both shoot fine until they're empty, then it's no more fun again. Right, we're gonna shoot suppressed now because really it was designed to shoot suppressed. This is the rugged obsidian on it. I've got a review on it somewhere else. You can go find that out. We do have an ablative in there just because 45 is kind of loud without it. We want to be quiet. Let's, uh, let's just shoot into the berm first. Then I can't help but play on steel. Oh, wow. That was really quiet with the ablative. That's awesome. I got a golf ball, <laughs> yes! Steel time. Sweet. That's fine. 
Sure is tight. Oh, yeah. Aw. Come on, buddy. Sweet. Okay, you see how you just use your, that your, your, what is it? Trigger finger to hit that pa magazine paddle. A few repetitions and now I'm hitting it just like a natural even though I haven't shot a European gun in months. So while I had my suppressor on the Mark 23, I was like, oh, let's pull out the FNX Tactical with suppressor as well. Different suppressors. This one is dry, but let's just see what they sound like as a pistol platform itself. Uh, remember I mentioned the thread pitch, so I cannot switch suppressors without getting a whole new dealio. Unless those pistons are interchangeable. We ain't gonna try that today, but that's a thought. Different tones for sure. The Osprey on this might be a little quieter after that first round pop gets away. Huh, fun stuff either way. Can I shoot it like this? I don't know. because this holds three more rounds. If you're comparing the FNX, which is completely practical, the HK is outdated. FNX came up with theirs and it's got, you can put an optic on it. It's got a standard rail, a little bit beefier mags and a standard threaded barrel. I've had my own issues with the FNX and you can go back to those videos. My first one was incredibly squishy here. Like I could almost make these sides touch together. They saw that I had an issue and they, you know, they swapped me out with one. So it's better now, but the HK doesn't bend at all. It seemed that when I put a suppressor on it, this one anyway, it was hitting to the right. Now it could be turbulence in the suppressor. You know, you can index these to time them right. So I just want to shoot again. And I figured y'all like seeing shooting. So let's shoot. We're going to go for that LaRue target over there. Center mass. Again. 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 Oh, snap. You see that? It's like, it's like dead stinking center right there. We're way too close for this mess. Let's start backing up. Still running that 230 grain angel fire. We're gonna see how we can connect at 50 yards. Now, these made history by being able to shoot two inch, sub two inch groups at 50 yards, but that's from a machine rest. <sighs> that's not me. So we're just gonna see what we got. Hit. Hit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's starting to get a mirage. I'm going to blame it on that. Try again. Oh, off to the right. Come on now. There we are. Had to end on a good note. What is that? D? I think it's D. All right. So we've got our angel fire 230 grain right here. We're not going for a group. We're just going to connect steel, right? Uh, this may be six rounds, so we'll go with it. We've got that Ipsic target down there. I wish I had a dot on this. Come on, HK. Maybe I can just put a scope on it upside down. I don't know. To the right. Hit. 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 Left. Hit. I don't see anything though. Let's go see what we did. So there's our group, which is about a German Desert Eagle size group at 100 yards open sights. I'd say that's all right. So here's the deal. It's an expensive handgun. It's cool. It's a little outdated. I mean, in all honesty, I think HK needs to come consider a striker fired because the five pound trigger is okay, but it's still heavy. And the 12 pound action, I don't like that. You need a regular rail on it. We need to be able to put an optic on it and everything else I'll take. But if I had to pick one gun that I need to take into battle, never have have warranty repair and all that good stuff it's gonna be this one unless it's concealed carry we're not concealed carrying this bad boy but that is about all there is to it thanks for watching today guys remember to check out that sale and all that good stuff click like subscribe get the notifications thanks for watching okay i love you bye bye now i just want to confirm wow that was warm
Did you see that? Come on, I said. Come on, I said. I came in like a wrecking ball. 